London seems to be a huge magnet for Australians, no matter what profession or business they're in. And you can't realise until you arrive just how many Australians live here. It is possible, <laughs> if you wished, to live in a tight Aussie circle and never really come into contact with the English at all. Now, the estimates on the number of Australians living here go up to figures like 30,000 or even higher. And week by week, the colony of Australians living in London grows bigger and bigger. Now, these people are not tourists. Most of them become permanent Londoners. Over the last 10 years, Australians have become uh, quite a significant force in London. And the situation as it now stands is that a greater percentage of Australian talent is now 12,000 miles from home, contributing in quite a large part to the cultural life of London, which is virtually a foreign city. Now why? What does London have? Or, conversely, what does Australia lack? I have a contract with a gallery socially. I have my, all my mates who are around that I take for granted uh, the availability of a certain kind of mental climate. That in London you take for granted that people can and understand the different languages and the diversity and the difficulty of and registering those things inside art. And this is why certain young, my generation, after the war, didn't actually feel the discomfort of Hitler. These sort of 23, 24, under 30 generation artists feel when they come to London that there is a specific pro professional attitude, a type of behaviour towards what they're doing. In Australia, they've got to justify their basic social position as being artists. They've got to somehow be village explainers, they've got to uh, fulfil their role that they can't be basically levelled on some kind of scale next to a plumber or somebody that does a normal, active, Christian, representative, arduous, hard-working activity. I don't consider myself an expatriate at all. Have you heard the term used? For me? For no, I haven't. Oh, yes, tongue, they use it for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> we hope we're not going to be expatriates for all time. Do you miss it at all? Or oh, gracious. I it always all? miss it. <laughs> <laughs> it's always talking about going riding. Yeah. Yes, well, that's what I want to do when I go home. <laughs> no, I do. Uh, when I, I miss the climate very much, and I miss the nice big Australian steaks and oysters and things like that. Oysters? Oh, I'm all singers like to eat, you know. Ill. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you think Australian artists overseas have a responsibility to return to work in Australia? Um, I think that they certainly have a, a responsibility to return to work in Australia, but also they have a responsibility to the rest of the world. If they have become um, international artists, they can't stay in any one place longer than any other place. I've found that I've been staying in America too long. I think that I should go more to Europe. The population of Britain have followed the trend in America and on the continent that they are far more dentally conscious. People uh, consider to lose their teeth is like having a wooden leg or a glass eye. It's an impediment. And a young girl would no more dream nowadays, in, uh, certainly in the southeast of Britain, to have all their teeth out or even someone have a denture. This is a uh, quite an impediment. Whereas in Australia, the attitude is have them out as soon as possible, have a denture, because it's painful and expensive. I've lived mostly in the Australian colony in the 14 years I've been here, and uh, most of my friends are dental surgeons, strangely enough, there's one or two doctors as well. And uh, I've been interested in flying for many, many years, ever since the war, I got my wounds at the end of the war, and uh, we formed amongst us the, the Southern Cross Flying Club. Baba, give them the big song dance act. One, two, come on, the Aussie boys. No, yes, yes. Oh, no, they swear it. Out on the booze again. Out on the booze again. Out on the booze again. The Aussie boys are out on the booze again. We want to wee wee now. I prefer the life of Europe, which is rather more sophisticated. Out on the booze again, out on the booze again. The Aussie boys are out on the booze again. We want to wee wee now. I prefer to live here and not go home and perhaps be a disciple for modern dentistry in Australia. We have racing every day, mm. although we only race once uh, 
uh, as I say, for eight months of the year. There is racing every day, and of course there's uh, many more big races over here. As you know, the Derby's worth yeah. 70 odd thousand, and there's so many other big races here. But uh, I think financial gains tend to be better over this side of the world. I know a place called Caroline. The good guys are swinging there all the time. For the life in England, I've been here for about three and a half years now, and uh, well, apart from the weather, but one gets used to that, uh, I think there's more to do, especially in London. It's time right now for a good guy short shot on Radio Caroline 199. And this good guy short shot comes from Solomon Burke. The Bob Dylan June called Maggie's Farm. It's uh, a great adventure, you know. I mean, you can go to the studio every day in Australia and, uh, and it seems to go on day by day. But here you come out on a ship and it's something quite different. And, uh, well, I thoroughly enjoy it. Well, I think that, uh, that when many Australians leave their homeland to go to England, it's expected of them by their aunties, their uncles, grandparents, nieces, nephews, neighbours and artistic colleagues that inevitably they're going to go several steps further up the ladder of achievement. They're going to, of course, make good when they come to England. Um, uh, Europe uh, being synonymous with the prize, they'll come back with a knighthood or an OBE, undoubtedly. And so one has the rather painful uh, spectacle of Australians clinging on, on the doll, in little bed sitting rooms. They've been here for 10, 15 years and they're still hoping to make it in a sort of a exaggerated, terrible way. And they dare not go back to Australia with their tails between their legs for fear of what the aunties, the uncles and the artistic colleagues are going to say about them. I think it's very important that a creative artist doesn't lose uh, their roots. I remember when Sidney Nolan came back for, um, for the first performance of my ballet, the display, he said to me, you know, you're quite right to come back to Australia. I realize what has been worrying me about my painting for a long time. I feel I've lost my roots. And he uh, then decided that six months a year he would go back to Australia every year. And I think this is very important uh, that a creative artist does not lose the, uh, the roots of the place where he desired to become an artist. Mm. And uh, I think painters, of course, are luckier. They can, they can keep, uh, they can do their work wherever they go. Uh, but it's very important that you don't forget that you are in Australia. The real meat of the problem is, would you be able to make the sort of films you want to make in Australia, even given that you could get the finance? Now, the film I'm making here, on which we've labored for a year and a half, most probably won't go into Australia. It'll probably be stopped as being obscene or it'll have crucial scenes cut out. Now this is very important. There's something basically wrong with a lot of things about Australia. You could call it intellectual corruption. I'm staying in England, as are many other Australian artists, actors, painters, writers, dancers, singers, because Australia doesn't seem to want us. The federal government has done nothing, the state governments do nothing. The average Australian seems to simply want beer, television, motor cars, and nothing else. I mean, these things are, are fine and worthwhile in themselves, but they don't add up to a full life. I think most countries' efforts are judged mainly by their cultural achievements, uh, the Australians don't seem to care very much. And to this I lay most of the blame at the feet of the, the powers that be from the government down. People constantly ask in Australia and hear all Australians talk about Australia, what are the problems? And the thing is, it's one of the greatest countries, it has the greatest potential on the earth today. But it's like a big, healthy, bronze, muscular body. Everything physical is there, but it's got no head because all of its brains are abroad working to enrich some other culture. <laughs>